to the fort. We are ready to pick up with chapter 9 in our new book, Dragon Masters Waking the Rainbow Dragon. Chapter 9, Kwaku. Obi put a finger to his lips. Shh, don't move, he whispered to Drake and Anna. It's a warthog. If you make any fast movements, it might attack. Obi raised his arms above his head and crept up to the warthog. Then he made a very loud, scary noise. Roar! Frightened, the warthog squealed and scrambled away. Wow, Obi, that was awesome, Drake said. You sounded like a big, scary cat. I was pretending to be a lion, Obi said. Do you have lions in Bracken? Drake shook his head. There are big, fierce cats, Obi explained. Anna smiled at Obi. You are very smart and brave. I think you were born to be a dragon master. Yes, Drake agreed. You found water for us, and you scared away the warty hog. You're amazing. Obi gave them both a shy smile. He caught up to Worm and Kepri, who had started moving again. A few minutes later, Obi's dragonstone began to glow faintly. Obi, look, Drake cried, pointing. Your stone is glowing. The rainbow dragon is trying to connect with you. Worm stopped. Obi must lead us the rest of the way, he told Drake. His connection is stronger than mine. Worm says you should lead us, Drake told Obi. How do I do that? Obi asked. Can you feel the pull of your dragon's energy, Anna said. Obi closed his eyes. It's weak, but I can feel it, he said, his voice rising with excitement. It's like she's in my head. Great, now walk toward that energy, Anna instructed. Obi started walking. They followed him to a low hill. A big hole in the hill led to an underground tunnel. Obi gazed into the tunnel. I, I think she's in here, he said. Anna looked up at Kepri. Can you please light the way for us? A white ball of light floated out of Kepri's mouth and hung in the air, lighting up the dark tunnel. The ball floated down the tunnel, and the others followed it. They went a short way and then stopped. A thick spider web blocked the entrance to a cave. Whoa! A very big spider must have made this, Drake said. Obi gasped. Quacko, he cried. What's a quacko? Drake asked. Quacko is a giant spider that my people tell stories about, Obi explained. Sometimes he is a hero, but sometimes he makes trouble. Are they true stories, Drake asked. Well, I thought they were just legends, Obi said. But look at this web. Only Quacko could have spun it. Suddenly, Drake's dragonstone began to glow. He heard Worm's voice inside his head. Obi is right. Quacko has trapped the rainbow dragon inside her cave. Wow. Chapter 10. Stuck in a web. Drake ran to the giant web blocking the entrance to the cave. He started pulling on the strands. I can't break the web, he said. It's too strong and too sticky. Drake, stop, Anna said. If there is a giant spider behind there, we need a plan. She turned to Obi. In the stories about Kuwaku, how is he defeated, she asked. I don't think he's ever been beaten. Kuwaku is a magical trickster. He usually uses tricks to escape, Obi said. There must be a way to stop him, Drake said. Well, some stories say he works for the ruler of the sun. So maybe the sun can stop Kwaku, Obi guessed. Hmm, Anna said. Kepri might not be the ruler of the sun, but she has the powers of the sun. Maybe she can break through the web and fight Kwaku's magic. Anna turned to Kepri. Use a sunbeam on the web. Kepri opened her mouth. And, a shot strong, and shot a strong beam of sunlight at the thick spider web. The strands of the web began to shimmer. Then they disappeared. It worked, Drake cried. Obi put a finger to his lips. Quiet. They stepped into the cave. 
The ball of white sunlight still floated in the air, lighting the dark space. Drake and Anna gasped. A dragon with a very long body was wrapped in a cocoon of spider silk. Through the silk, Drake could see the dragon's rainbow-colored scales. The rainbow dragon, Obi cried. Kepri, use another sunbeam to get rid of the cocoon. Anna commanded. The dr- sun dragon aimed a strong beam of sunlight at the rainbow dragon. The webs began to shimmer, but before they could disappear, click, 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 a loud clicking sound began to echo through the cave. Kepri stopped shooting her sunbeam and turned toward the sound. A giant spider crawled out of the shadows. His eight long legs were black and yellow striped. striped. His round body had a black and yellow pattern. Eight round black eyes stared at the dragon masters and their dragons. Drake, Anna, and Obi started to slowly back up. Eee! With a cry, the spider scurried toward them. Kepri and Worm charged forward, protecting their dragon masters. Kepri, hit him with sunlight, Anna yelled. Kepri aimed a beam of sunlight at Kwaku. The spider jumped up to avoid it. He hung upside down from the ceiling of the cave. In a flash, he shot webs at Kepri. The webs wrapped around her mouth. Kepri couldn't fight back. The webs magically grew and twisted all around Kepri's body. Kepri, Anna cried. Worm's body began to glow green. But before he could use his powers, Kwaku cut him, hit him with webs too. The webs wrapped around Worm. Within seconds, he was trapped inside a cocoon. Quick, hide, Drake yelled to Anna and Obi. We can't help the dragons if Kwaku gets us too. The friends raced behind a big rock. Drake touched his dragonstone. Worm, can you hear me, he whispered. Drake's dragonstone glowed faintly. Drake heard a muffled voice in his head. He turned to Anna and Obi. Worm is trying to tell me something, but I can't understand him, he said. The cocoon must be blocking Worm's powers. I can't hear Kepri's voice in my head either, Anna whispered. What now, Drake asked. We can't fight Quaco without our dragons. Wow. Tune in tomorrow for Chapter 11.